days are going and um, welcome to the next one of the Lansing Conversations. Um, I'm with um, this afternoon, I'm with Steve Rees and I shall pass, my, uh, pass over to him to introduce himself. So hello Steve. Hi, hi. Um, yep, so my name's Steve Rees. I'm um, I work uh, for both the Lantern Methodist Church uh, and the Lantern Arts Centre uh, at the Lantern Centre uh, in, in on operations. So I'm 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 dealing with a whole load of things across across the board. Really, uh, I kind of um, anything uh, to do with a building, whether it's people hiring the space, whether it's classes that are being set up by Lantern Arts Centre, whether it's productions, all the way through to the the coffee shop at the front of the building. Um, Pretty much, I got my finger in every pie there, um, and it's it's great to have that actually because, in a way, it means that um, nothing well, hopefully, nothing slips through the net uh, between the the two organisations that the Lantern Arts and, and the Lantern Methodist Church, which are, are working so closely at the moment. So, I'm uh, I'm pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds it. Um, so your rolling includes say the whole of the centre, doesn't it? I mean, when people come to the office. Um, they often see you or if even when they come for productions to see things you're front of house or you're um, selling programs um, but you've also then had a hand in the build of the sets and yeah. everything like that so it, you really are sort of the jack of all trades aren't you is that a fair yeah I think um, it's an interesting place because you know you um I think people say of it that when you when you come along uh, to any of the activities, you kind of get drawn into the place. The uh, whether it's the people or the or I'm sure it is the people. Uh, people, the place you, you you start maybe doing one or two small things, and before you know it, you're, you're involved in lots of things. And um, I, uh, I I I very much enjoy being part of the centre, but also just um, yeah, there's the whole lot of things that relate to my my work. Um, and making sure that the centre runs smoothly. But also, when it gets to the productions that are, are put on there, there's a million and one smaller jobs that end up coming up. You mentioned the set design and, and set building, and, um, uh, and, and you know, that's uh, something you might be involved in in the morning, and then suddenly in the afternoon, uh, something's come up. I don't know, every day is different, uh, and it might be related to uh, a problem with a... You know, an old building. We've got a, a, a church that is 105 years old. So, you know, things go wrong. Uh, things leak. Things break. Uh, you know, uh, doors won't close or curtains won't open or the tiniest things, which of course users need when they're when they're in that space to be working. So, um, it's a very varied role. And um, I think when you get involved, not only as uh, someone who works there, but also uh, who volunteers there and, and spends their own time there. Um, it becomes really a, a really kind of encompassing uh, kind of place, which which we, we all thrive on, I think. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And I think that is it. I think the fact that every day is different, like you say, you know, uh, you can be one, say, doing one thing in the morning and then so you'll get a curveball thrown at you at lunchtime. <laughs> And then you end up doing something completely and not planned. I think that's the, you know, we have this rough plan up on the wall of the office of, of things that should be happening that day, but whether that actually ever happens or, or, uh, or goes right. to plan or not. You, yeah. you, 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 uh, you get to your to-do list about 4 p.m. and go, ah, yes, I didn't get to any of those, but uh, they'll, they'll save and I'll be back the next day. So uh, that's, that's it's all wrong. good. It's all yeah, good. yeah. Now, um, uh, some of our staff, our coffee staff, have been furloughed, and some of the LAC staff we spoke to Dave um, a, a few days ago have been furloughed. Um, but uh, but you, you're still working. You're still working both for the LAC and for um, the church. So how has that how has that changed over lockdown for you? Because obviously we can't use our building at the moment. No, and um, I'm actually no stranger to working from home myself. But uh, the the nature of of, of kind of you know operations and managing operations at, at uh, somewhere like the Lantern Centre is that you are incredibly hands-on as I've said so not only is it a lot of relationships with um, building users and classes and, and people who come and attend the various shows and things that we do and of course our huge raft of volunteers but um, it's very much face-to-face -face. it's very much hands-on you don't sit and you bum very much you're out and about you're moving around so to come to working from home uh, in a very different way, which lots of people are trying to, um, you know, create our online presence, staying connected with our community out there, um, is is very different. Um, I'm 
actually quite good in some ways from working from home in that I, <laughs> you, you could say, well, there's less distractions because as, as you mentioned before, there's so much going on at the arts center and, and, and the church, but actually, um, you know, it's, it's very disconnected. It's very, it, it, it serves a purpose, but it doesn't really kind of float your boat at the same time. You, you get a great uh, feeling of uh, fulfillment working with people and helping the people in that place, not helping them uh, necessarily do something they couldn't have done themselves, but supporting other people. And I think that connection with people is what's unique about well, I say unique, but it's certainly very much a big part of, of the centre. Mm -hmm. So to be at home in my office, uh, plugging away on something that maybe I wouldn't ordinarily do quite so much of, the, the online uh, presence and stuff, is it's good. I'm busy, but it is very, very, very different. Uh, and I suppose uh, what keeps me going through all of it is knowing that, um, you know, I strongly believe we'll be back um, in front of each other as soon as we can, as soon as it's safe to. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And so keeping the, the fires burning in the background is, is hugely important. And, and that's where my focus is, really. Yeah, it's about keeping that lantern shining, isn't it? And I think this is one of the reasons behind the conversations was that, you know, it is. We, we can plug away online and say, you know, oh, come to this or, you know, be, be showcasing what we've done previously, which, you know, is great or, or get that online presence but nothing beats that interpersonal conversation that we're not really having with members of the public and members of our community are we at the moment it's, it's sort of we're yeah that's yeah definitely. and it's hard it's hard because um a, a huge chunk of our community uh, is um not actually necessarily online uh, potentially um uh, older folk who are not really fussed about the the online um uh, arena so there's a good chunk of certainly the Lantern Arts Centre uh, database are, are very much people we contact via post yeah. normally. Um, so the, the clips and things that we're sending out and keeping in touch uh, is it, not necessarily for them. Um, however, uh, and as a result of that, we've, we've been doing a kind of a keeping in touch campaign as well, where we've been phoning around some of uh, our um, older members, some of our members who we feel are less likely to be seeing some of this online mm -hmm. content, just to say hi. Uh, see uh, if you need anything um, and and really just to kind of touch base with people who are potentially living alone, maybe uh, have health problems, that sort of thing. So that's a big old job because there's quite a lot of them yeah. uh, and they don't always pick up the phone either because um, they are maybe uh, enjoying their, their, their quieter times. But yeah, um, keeping in touch is a challenge and, and that's um, that's one we're, we're working on. Yeah, yeah, De we definitely are. We definitely are. And we're finding new ways of doing that, aren't we? I think that's, you know... That, and the same as everybody else. So um, you're, you're working from home and, uh, and I know you're a dad <laughs> and yes. a husband. Um, I hope you've not heard too much in the background. <laughs> <laughs> how, um, how difficult has it been um, as a, because uh, Millie, your daughter's very young, so um, mm. she's not school age. It's not that you've had to worry about homeschooling, but you know, both you and your wife would have been out at work and, and she was getting used to nursery and all of that. So has that change of routine um, been difficult for you as a family or have you actually found a joy in working um, at home together? Do you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it is different. And uh, I think there are families across the UK who are gonna have all sorts of challenges during this time. Um, not least of all, if you don't have a great deal of space in your home, if you've got a kind of a bigger family and, and not so much outside space, you know, it differs, doesn't it? People have different things, but you know, we're fortunate we have got garden space here, but it's actually, again, it comes back to the people thing. Um, yes, my, we've got, I've got a 16 month old uh, daughter, Millie. Um, she was doing a couple of days um, uh, in, in nursery, as I say, each week. Mm -hmm. And my wife was then uh, working. She's found, of course, then now that that's off the car, she's furloughed, so she's at home. Um, and so has got kind of 24 seven with Millie whilst I'm kind of working uh, from home and not able to break that day up with kind of visits out to meet up with with friends as you might do often I think mums um, I'm thinking mums will agree with this that you, you try to keep your days busy you kind of you can try and break it up so that you um, don't have that feeling of monotony or, or getting worn down by, by, by the huge job that being a mum is mm. so that's actually been hard. I mean, we, we shouldn't be bleating about it. What, what, what we got to do, we've got to stay at home and, 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 you know, really how tough is that? But on a personal uh, and social, um, you know, the, our generation is very much 
um, we're social beasts. We've got all of these uh, interaction points in our communities, in our, you know, even if it is online around the place. So to have that shut down is actually, it's a bit more of a, a you know, a mental challenge than it is maybe a physical one, but uh, it does make a difference and it is tough, but um, actually, you know, it's also a fantastic thing to be able to see more of them and uh, more of her, uh, uh, even though we might not be able to keep our eyelids open come the end of the day. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's, it's difficult. It is. And we see, I mean, we see that social interaction in the play zone, don't we? Because um, we have a play zone at the, at, at the centre um, yeah. that's open nearly every day of the week and um, accessed. It's, we would describe it almost as an indoor park, couldn't we? It's, uh, it, there's play equipment in there, but we don't sort of supervise much or there's no activities as such is there, but we are hoping to expand that. But, you know, there is some, um, yeah, and it's just like social interaction, isn't it? Of parents and carers getting out and mm. just interacting with other adults just for 20 minutes half an hour <laughs> it's funny a few a few times actually we thought of developing that play zone qu quite a lot more haven't we and have structured yeah. sessions yeah. but actually you know when you speak to the the mums that come they quite like it just as it is you know <laughs> to come in uh, be there with a, you know a few of the pals and, and meet up with other children and, and it's you know they look after their own children there it's a very laid back big space it's bright yeah uh, and actually um you know we could do with maybe a, a few newer toys and maybe you know open up a, a, an extra day and a few other bits and bobs but actually it's it's a nice it's, it's a nice place for people to come to and and they do warm to it so yeah and i can understand now why yeah why they all go <laughs> Well, they all come to us because it really is that you know and the devastation look on the door on the coffee shop but it says play zone's not open today oh, you can see no, them all no. turning their buggies around with sad faces <laughs> you know. well, hopefully we'll get rid of that sign soon yeah well exactly exactly and that will be um that'll be brilliant um so mm. we, we've sort of talked a little bit about hope and and that kind of thing so you know what are your um what are your hopes for when when we are able we've had conversations haven't we um as groups um over the last couple of days about um, what the centre will look like when we reopen, um, depending mm. on how and when bits of it will be able to be open. Um, what kind of hope do you have um, for the centre um, post COVID-19 really? Well, I think broadly the, the, the Lantern Centre has got, you know, some really exciting plans you know, bigger picture, we've been looking at um, the development of this building uh, as a joint venture between the Art Centre and, and the church uh, for some time, several years actually. And at the moment we're really, those plans are really starting to gain the momentum prior to the, prior to the lockdown. And I'm, I'm actually still very, very confident that they will come to pass. Um, it may well be a little bit uh, later. It may not be uh, quite as soon. It might look a little bit different in terms of how some of the spaces are developed uh, if you're not aware the, the 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 church itself is 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 very old as we say and actually needs a, a significant development if it's going to kind of last for the next hundred years um and we've been looking at how uh, that could be redesigned reshaped re re, re um re rejuvenated really mm -hmm. to to um kind of manage the use it's now getting because it's it's getting fuller people more people are using it and i'm still very hopeful that actually all of that will happen mm. um yes there could be some immediate changes i think in the in in the short term three months six months year we've got to just follow with the advice that comes out from the various health organizations and the government and we will do that yeah. and i think you know uh necessity is the mother of all invention uh you know there will be a need to do things a certain way and we will do them and mm. uh, i've got a, a strong belief that actually you know you times like this you realize the things that are really important to you i think actually people will realize that community is hugely important and they're going to want to get out be with the community uh, be involved in 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 centers like ours and uh yeah i i can't you know i can't help but think um it will be all right and it will be good and uh, i'm looking forward to that and that's kind of what spurs me on with this work because it's it's um this is a means to getting back to that yeah. and yeah i'm looking forward